This is going to be Ecclesiastes chapter 11. And I'm going to talk about why I'm glad this world is not my home. Number one, because of the waiting. In Ecclesiastes 11.1 1, it says, Cast thy bread upon the waters, for thou shalt find it after many days. You see, right now we are casting the bread of the Word of God on the waters. You see, the Word of God is likened to bread or food in the Scriptures. For example, in Luke 4, 4, when Jesus is being tempted by the devil, it says, And Jesus answered him, saying, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. And the waters in the Bible are likened to people. In Revelation seventeen fifteen, it says, And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest, where the horse sitteth, are peoples, and multitudes, and nations, and tongues. So when Solomon says in Ecclesiastes 11, 1, Cast thy bread upon the waters, that uh, pictures us throwing out the word of God there to the people that we make contact with in this world. So you're casting the bread of the word of God on the people. I'm making these studies and spreading the gospel, and I'm waiting to see what the outcome will be. Cast thy bread upon the waters, for thou shalt find it after many days. And 1 Corinthians 15, 58 says, For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. I love putting the word of God out, but I'm glad it, this is not my home because of the waiting, waiting for the outcome. You see, when I leave this world, the waiting will be over. And imagine if the Lord put up a big screen. When you get up there, imagine the Lord sets you in front of a big screen and shows you your labor that you did for Him and how it affected time and eternity. That would be something to see. But that's why I'm glad this world is not my home, because all the waiting. And the next reason I'm glad I'm leaving this world is because of the wandering wondering what is around the corner. Ecclesiastes 11, 1 and 2, Cast thy bread upon the waters, for thou shalt find it after many days. Give a portion to seven, and also to eight. For thou knowest not what evil shall be upon the earth. So take the bread, give a portion to seven and to eight, and just keep giving it out, because you don't know what's around the corner. For thou knowest not what evil shall be upon the earth. You know, are the evil men going to start jailing us for going to church? Are they going to start taking our liberty to cast the bread on the waters? They're going to make it where that's a crime? Is a prison sentence for giving out the gospel in the near future? Are they going to crack down on all the people that don't have the vaccine? Are they going to do this? Are they going to do that? I don't know what is waiting for me around the corner. We might as well put as much of the truth out for free as we can, for thou knowest not what evil shall be on the earth. I never imagined when I was a little kid that the wicked things going on today would be as normal as breathing, but we don't never know what kind of evil is going to be around the corner. In 2010, I didn't know what was going to take place in 2020. Right now, I don't know what's going to happen in 2031, 10 years from now. When I get to eternity, I know what is waiting on me around the corner. In Revelation 21, 3 through 4, it says, And I heard a great voice out of heaven, saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Second Peter three thirteen. Nevertheless we, according to his purpose, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. In eternity, you know what's waiting for you around the corner. Righteousness. No more crying. No more sorrow. No more death. No more pain. Nowadays, it is getting to be like when you go to town, you're going out in the wild or something. I mean, I'm always hearing about a predator going after a kid in the store in my town. And this is in small town Tennessee. I'm always looking to make sure a lion isn't after my kids in the store. A, a predator. I guess I've seen too many crime investigation stories or abduction stories, but you just can't be too careful in 2021 in an insane world. In eternity, I won't have to wonder 
what is behind the next corner and that's why i'm glad this world's not my home the next reason i'm glad this world isn't my home is because of water damage ecclesiastes 11 3 and 4 if the clouds be full of rain they empty themselves upon the earth and if the tree fall toward the south or toward the north and the place where the tree falleth there it shall be he that observeth the wind shall not sow and he that regardeth the clouds shall not reap the things of this world get water damaged by those clouds that are full of rain if the clouds be full of rain they empty themselves upon the earth and you see, the things of this world get water damage. That's why Matthew six nineteen through 20, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. All you have down here is temporal things that can be destroyed by water, rust, thieves, moths, your dog all kinds of other stuff but i'm going to a place where i don't have to fool with that stuff anymore i'm going to a place where i'll have earned some crowns and rewards if i serve with the right motive down here and those things i'm going to get won't wear away or decay or rust or wither or whatever else first corinthians nine twenty five says and every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown but we an incorruptible. I'm going to a place where the stuff I have won't be water damaged. It won't get corrupted. It won't rust. You got to get to work down here if you want some crowns. Sitting around doing nothing, is it going to get you anything when it comes to rewards and crowns in eternity? In Ecclesiastes 11.4, it says, He that observeth the wind shall not sow, and he that regardeth the clouds shall not reap. If you just sit around and observe the wind, you won't do anything. A lot of people party while they're young and don't do anything for God. And then they get old and retire, sit at Hardee's or on the front porch and watch the wind blow and never sow anything. And when they are young, they are carried by the wind, tossed to and fro. And when they get old, they just observe the wind. Right now, while you're young, you need to think about the one who made the wind. Proverbs 30 and verse 4, Who hath ascended up into heaven, or descended? Who hath gathered the wind in his fists? Ecclesiastes 11, 4, He that observeth the wind shall not sow, and he that regardeth the clouds shall not reap. If you just sit around and regard the clouds, you won't reap, because you're not doing anything. Think about the one who's coming with clouds. That'll make you do something. If you are going to... I think it's good to look at the clouds during a time of meditation but while you're looking at those clouds think about the one who's coming with clouds revelation 1 7 behold he cometh with clouds and every eye shall see him and they also which pierced him and all kindreds of the earth shall well because of him even so amen if you set your affection on things above and not make yourself at home in this world then you'll end up sowing and reaping some rewards at the judgment seat of christ the next reason this world isn't my home is because of womb dangers. Ecclesiastes 11.5 As thou knowest not what is the way of the spirit, nor how the bones do grow in the womb of her that is with child, even so thou knowest not the works of God who maketh all. I just can't find in the Bible where it says that abortion is okay because it is the woman's body anyway. That is just the wisdom of this world. That's not godly wisdom. And actually, if you are a born-again Christian, then no, woman, it's not your body. In 1 Corinthians six nineteen through 20, it says, What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. If you're saved, then your body is the Lord's body. If you're married, then your body is also your husband's body. 1 Corinthians 7, 4, The wife hath not power of her, of her own body, but the husband. And likewise also, the husband hath not power of his own body, but the wife. And Paul also said there, The husband hath not power over of his own body, but the wife. So I throw that in there before the feminazis get, lose their head here and say, well, the Bible's sexist and things like that. But you got to realize, if you're a saved, born-again believer, your body's not your own, it's the Lord's. 
You can't just say, well, this is my body. I'm going to do with it what I want to. I can't find in the scriptures where it says it's okay to abort your child. The verse in Ecclesiastes just said, in Ecclesiastes 11.5, As thou knowest not what is the way of the spirit, nor how the bones do grow in the womb of her that is with child. Even so thou knowest not the works of God who maketh all. You see, that child, it has a heartbeat. It has its own blood. It has bones that are growing in you. It is a person, and you're killing something that God made. He just said the same way you don't know the bones grow in the womb is the same way you don't know how the works of God who maketh all. He said, let me read that again. He said, Nor how the bones do grow in the womb of her that is with child, even so thou knowest not the works of God who maketh all. If he makes all, and there's something growing in your womb, then who do you think put that person in there? Jeremiah 1.5 says, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. God is the one who forms the person in the belly. What if you were building a house, and overnight someone just came and tore it to pieces and then sold the wood? How would you feel? That is what Planned Parenthood is about. God is forming a person in the womb, and then they just come in, tear it to pieces, and sell the body parts. This world isn't my home. And I'm, I'm glad, because there are a bunch of people walking around with bloody hands... The average lost person who walks on the street, at least where I live in small town Tennessee, is against abortion. And the average lost man here doesn't give God a thought, but naturally he's against abortion. So what do you think is going on in the mind and lives? What do you think is going on in the mind of a lost man who has performed 10,000 or more abortions in his career. I would be weary of being in the same room with somebody like that. Why would you want to be in this wicked world anymore? Why would you want to call this wicked world your home? There are evil men among us. But next, this world isn't my home because it is a world of darkness. In Ecclesiastes 11.6 it says, In the morning sow thy seed. And in the evening, withhold not thine hand, for thou knowest not whether shall prosper, whether shall prosper. Either this, the this would be the morning, or that, and that would be the evening, or whether they both shall be alike good. You see, in the morning, sow thy seed. In the morning, sow thy seed. What's the seed? You need to sow the word of God. Luke eight eleven. Now the parable is this, the seed is the word of God. In the evening, withhold not thine hand. Keep sowing the word. And in Isaiah 55, 11, it says, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void. It shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto, whereto I sent it. So in the morning, sow thy seed. And in the evening, withhold not thine hand. Sow the word in the morning. Sow the word in the evening. You don't know what's going to come of it. You think that nothing's coming of it, but you don't know when it's going to pro. You don't know what's going to happen. It says, "For thou knowest not whether shall prosper, either this or that, or whether they both shall be alike good." But your labor's not in vain in the Lord. You see, just keep sowing it, because Ecclesiastes eleven seven. Truly, the light is sweet, and a pleasant thing it is for the eyes to behold the sun. Do you ever just walk outside and think how is God allowing the sun to shine on wicked little me and this wicked world of God haters? I mean, when I leave work, sometimes it's sunny and it's nice out and it feels good. And I think to myself, I should be walking out into a couple tornadoes, a tsunami, an earthquake, a sandstorm, a locust plague, a lava floor with nothing to step on and then crash my car into a, a big iceberg and then jaws just come up and get me and eat me. But no, the sun's shining. I got a car that's going to get me home. And I'm thinking, why is God so good to me? In Matthew 5.45, it says, That ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven, for he maketh his sun to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. This world is a world of darkness that the Lord is showing mercy to by allowing his sun to shine on it. But where I'm going is so much better.
In Revelation 22, 5, it says, And there shall be no night there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun. For the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. I'm going to spend eternity in light. And the sun will still be there, but it won't be needed. It's just for looks or whatever the Lord wants to use it for. But that's why I'm glad this world's not my home. You see, I go out and see the sun now, but I've got something better on the other side. Ecclesiastes 11.8 But if a man live many years and rejoice in them all, yet let him remember the days of darkness, for they shall be many. All that cometh is vanity. You see, it's a world of darkness. Even if you live a hundred years and have a good time for the most part during the whole thing, there's still going to be many days of darkness. You're going to get sick. People's going to die. You're going to get your heart broke. You're going to fall, break stuff in your body. All kinds of stuff. Job 14.1 Man that is born of a woman is of few days and full of trouble and psalm 90 and verse 10 the days of our years are three score years and ten that's 70 years and if by reason of strength they be four score years 80 years yet is their strength labor and sorrow for it is soon cut off and we fly away my home isn't like this in my home you never grow old peter pan copied this with neverland but in eternity eternity you just keep living and living You'll have never-ending days, and none of them will have darkness or sorrow. And that's why I'm glad this world's not my home. And the next reason I'm glad this world isn't my home is because of wasted lives. I'm glad it's not my home because of the waiting, because of the wondering what's around the corner, because of the, the womb dangers, because it's a world of darkness, because of wasted lives. Ecclesiastes 11.9 Rejoice, O young man, in thy youth, and let thy heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth, and walk in the ways of thine heart and in the sight of thine eyes. But know thou that for all these things God will bring thee into judgment. Most young people are getting up every day living for the flesh, and if they have any intentions of getting right with God at all, it is in the back of their mind that they will, but in the very distant future. They aren't concerned about death or eternity. Young people today will drink and smoke and have sex, even though all the warnings about these things are out there in the open, that you shouldn't do them, it's not a good idea. And they've been warned about these things by preachers and even lost people that have some sense, many times warn them. So they know the dangers and the consequences, and yet they waste their lives anyway. Why do you want to waste your life on temporary thrills? Don't you know that all the junk just causes havoc on your body and on your pocket? I know people who smoke two packs a day, and that's like close to $100 a week. I'd say beer's probably even more expensive. And then there goes half your paycheck. There goes your body. I mean, it's not good for your marriage. It's not good for your kids to see you. Your kids see you doing all that stuff, and they grow up and then waste their lives too. Ecclesiastes 11.10 Therefore, remove sorrow from the heart. And put away evil from thy flesh, for childhood and youth are vanity. The way to remove sorrow from your heart is to quit trying to get happy on all the junk of this world and focus on Jesus Christ and the things of Him that fulfill. Put away evil from your flesh. It's clear. Romans 8, 13, For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of your body, of the body you shall live. Did you ever sit and think about how all the bad things that you do are causing havoc on you and your body? You're drinking, you're smoking, people fornicating leads to STDs. I mean, all the bad things you do, isn't it? Don't you find it kind of strange? It always leads to something bad happening to you in the future. And you say you don't care now, but... You're going to care when it finally comes time to reap what you've sowed. Why do you want to waste your life? Why not go ahead and live for the Lord while you're young? Why wait till you get old? I'm telling you, if you wait till you get old, it's probably not going to happen. I've seen plenty of old men and old women that are still full of the devil at a old age, still listening to filthy music. I've seen old women that still dress up like whores. I've seen... Uh, older men that are still drinking, still talk like they're in their 20s. Don't wait until you get old, because if you wait until you get old, it's probably not going to happen then either. You're going to, I mean, you're just going to be wishing you were young again. So don't waste your life. But I'm glad this world's not my home. 
because I just hate seeing wasted lives.